Well, we're building up for another great climax here on a balmy Monday evening, the men's 10,000 metre final. Kenanisa Bikeli of Ethiopia, the world record holder, the Olympic champion, the defending champion. A crown he first won in 2003 when he beat Haile Gabri Selassie. A usual big gathering of East Africans here. Ethiopia have won seven of the last eight editions of this race at the World Championship. Seven golds in all. Well, we thought the Ethiopians would dominate the women's 10,000 metre race. First of all, Tunish de Barba pulled out, and then Messeret de Far on that dramatic last lap. Ran until her legs stopped working. She went from first to fifth in the space of about 15 metres, and the Kenyans took the honours in that. So the Ethiopians will be absolutely determined. Merger, one of the Ethiopians said, Ethiopians will want to reclaim the honours once again here. Kenanisa Bekele unbeaten over this distance. And what an amazing statistic that is. Well, Masai won the uh, women's 10,000 metres for Kenya. We've got a Masai in here for Kenya as well, but it's Moses Masai. And he was fourth at the Beijing 10,000 metres, so another one to watch out for. But this is the man that uh, they've all got to beat, really. 30 men lining up here. We used to have to have heats, and they must surely have thought about it again for this one. There was a slight controversy, actually, in the women's 10,000 metres, Peter, when they, the outside echelon broke early. No one has actually mentioned too much about that, but this time round they've actually put cones out so that the athletes on the outside stagger really do run right round the outside of the first bend. And I suppose they would have to with 30 athletes. It's a big, big field. It's, it's, I can't remember the last time we've had a field this size in a major championship at 10,000 metres. No, I can't. And I say the first few world championships, indeed in the Olympics as well, they always used to have heats. They've because there were fewer entries, they reduced it down to a straight final. But really, 30 is too many. Mika Kogo, Olympic bronze medalist, set a world best on the streets, 27.01. And he would dearly love to make it a Kenyan double over 10,000 metres. That's Abiba Dinkesa on the outside. There have been several Ethiopians run quicker than Dinkesa this year. But the man to the left of your screen got the nod over them. Tedesse. Well, Tedesse is the twice world half marathon champion, Formula World Cross Country champion, so very, very strong athlete, really. Well, that, in fact, is his younger brother, Kidane. I was trying to work out which it was. They look very similar. Kidane Tedesse, his elder brother, Zerzane Tedesse, was Eritrea's first Olympic medalist. He got a bronze for them. Back in Athens in 2004, and in fact he beat Bekele for the World Cross Country title in Mombasa in 2007. So this is the final of the men's 10,000 metres. A massive field of 30, and this is the man they are all going to want to beat. A huge group there, and as Steve pointed out, in the women's race they didn't hold on to the stagger. And I think that might be Zerzane Tedesse up on the outside, and he's not hanging around at all. That is Zerzane Tedesse leading the field at the moment. So the Eritreans maybe have got a plan in this race, and they want to go hard, and they want to go early. I think their only plan is to uh, make sure that their stagger is, uh, is used to their advantage to get to the head of this massive field, really. You don't want to be amongst uh, 30 men when they all come in over the back straight and start jockeying for positions. There's Kogo of Kenya, just uh, tucked in nicely in the middle of the field. I don't think we'll see too much from the Ethiopians until maybe halfway through the race. There's the big, well, I would say the little man, really, wouldn't I? But uh, there's Bikini, he's fairly small and diminutive. He's about uh, sixth or seventh place in the red shorts and green vest moving outside now as they come around to the 24 laps to go marker. 
decent, decent pace without being special. 66-29. So I've just checked the record books. Gretchy did have even more starting in Seville, believe it or not, than the, in the frying pan of Spain in 1999. Three Eritreans, though, in the first four. Yeah, very interesting to see what their tactics. In fact, we've got a leader, Nicholas Kemboy. There he is to the left of your picture. One of the few Kenyans to go to Qatar but managed to hold on to his own name. Abdullah's behind him, the other Qatari athlete. So we have Qatar first and second, Eritrea third, fourth and fifth. And it is really interesting now how these countries do use team tactics in the long races. But Bikaili is tucked in very, very early stages at the moment. He didn't have a perfect winter. He was injured and, in fact, his first track outing this year, he did win in the end, but he looked a little bit vulnerable. So the two Qataris at the moment taking the pace out. Bekele is in sixth place. He is the first of the four Ethiopians in this race, and you can be sure that they will also have team tactics of their own. 67 seconds, the second lap, and we'll get a check on the uh, kilometre time in a moment or two. What a lovely style Kenanisa Bekele has. A style that works on the country as well. There is the first case split, 2.46. Yeah, so I think it's a typical pattern for a championship race, Steve. We've seen a lot of these, haven't we? A fairly steady, not too slow, but fairly steady start. Come back to that in a moment. And um, before the excitement in the second half of the race. Very early stages, Kip Yego, the useful Kenyan, just going through your screen there. World Cross Country bronze medalist. Kenanisa Bekele. Behind him, Gebra Mariam. Very tall countryman. Zerzane Tedese does sometimes like to go hard at the front of these races to run the unbelievable sting out of Bekele's finish. Nobody's really interested in going with Kemboy at the moment. I think the Ethiopians are do what they normally do, I think Peter's right, they don't really worry at all about what goes on in front for the first half of the race, they're just quite content to relax, almost uh, conserve whatever energy they need for the latter part, where they obviously use their strength, which is this massive surge which they put on, and uh, they'll be very happy that uh, someone else is doing all the work out in front. Moses Masai, the Kenyan in second place. He was fourth in Beijing last year. My goodness me, the celebrations that would go on in Kenya if he could win this race would be remarkable, but a very, very long way to go. Just beginning to stretch out a little bit. I mean, they're all still close-ish together. Bekele just going through your screen there. But I don't think it'll be too much longer before this field starts to spread out a little bit Nicholas Kemboy in control at the moment two Americans Rupp and Rittenhain also quite prominent they go through the two kilometer point and they've gone through that in 534.24 well the Qatari athlete Kemboy has decided to go to the front again but no sooner had he sped up than he slowed down again he's not really interested in uh, doing too much apart from just easing himself to the front of the field and just relaxing really they're waiting, aren't they? They're all waiting for Bikili. Because he's, he's the maestro. He's the one that's going to dictate the tactics of this race. They're just waiting to see when he's going to move. And that's when they try and counter whatever he's got. Just see the Americans at the back of the field there. But it's very much an East African domination, isn't it? I mean, the ex-East Africans who are running in the Qatari colours, then all the Kenyans, then the Eritreans and the Ethiopians, and also in the yellow vest, the Ugandans as well. As they come up now to the three kilometer point so we can take a check on the time again when they go to that and it's uh, by distance running standards relatively slow 8 1955 that was a 245 kilometer the previous one was 248 after they started at 246 so they're running virtually even pace really there's not a lot uh, of difference in it so even though it's uh, been changing the lead the rhythm it hasn't changed at all Ken Boy as we said just chugging along there now Kogo comes up onto his shoulder. The Kenyans are packing in just behind now. Masai also there as well. 
So they're doing a little bit of sharing the pace, but I think it's almost as if they're just getting to the front to relax. Top European, incidentally, is back in 14th place, Rui Pedro Silva of Portugal, and then the uh, Barrios of Mexico just behind him. Very much Ethiopian dominated, except those two Americans going well. Rupp and Ritzenheim in 10th and 11th place. Well, really, this event has been totally and utterly dominated by East Africans. They're all just piling through your screen. Moses Masai there. Now they're beginning to spread out just a little bit. We're into the second third of this race and still no move by the unbeaten Kenanisa Bekele. It's hard to believe that we have an athlete, we said, those of you who follow your distance running, it's been said many times, there is Kenanisa Bekele, Gebri Gebramarian behind him, the taller of his countrymen. And Bekele's hero, Haile Gabri Selassie, well, he's lit up the world stage four times. He's won this title. Gabri Selassie, um, Bekele will equal the achievements of Gabri Selassie if he wins tonight. Now he just starts to make his presence felt, the Olympic champion, the world record holder, the defending world champion. There you can see him on the right of your screen. Kipiego, the Kenyan out in front now. <laughs> the Kenyans are just switching around, aren't they? Just to sort of get themselves relaxed out in front. Kipiego just uh, almost jogging along there. The, these Africans really are not being troubled at all by any of this pace. Now you see the Ethiopians starting to come through. Bikini just looks over his shoulder to see where the rest of his team are, checking on them. And that was interesting there because as Bikaili came up onto the shoulder of Mika Kogo, Kogo just gave him a little nudge and said, hey, hang on, I've got this inside lane. Bikaili, I just saw him take a glance up at the big scoreboard, big screen at the end of the stadium, so he'll be able to see what's going on behind him without actually turning round. There's an eight Dese now. The Eritrean who got the bronze medal. Well, Kenboy now took the lead and he actually took it with a bit of vengeance. And now we're starting to see them mixing up a bit. Just to give a check on the time, four kilometres, 11.04.75, another 2.45 kilometre. But the pace has stepped up. This is a definite move. Look at Serzanegta Dese, the Eritrean. He has decided that enough is enough and this field it's going about Mika Kogo just getting a shove there by another one of the Ethiopians. That was Merger. Zerzaneta Dese, the Olympic bronze medalist from 2004. He is a hugely popular figure back home. Well, to Dese now has decided this is a real race. And just as he did it, just as he started moving ahead, the maestro himself, Bakili, sensed that there was danger. And in doing that, just again eased himself into the perfect position. Tedesse working hard, but Keeley looking as if he's just taking it easy. He'll love this. He'll love someone taking it up, especially as it's not an Ethiopian. There's that lap, 61.81. Well, it's much the fastest of the race. And also looking very good, I must say, is the World Cross Country champion, the tall figure of uh, Gebri, Ma Gebri Mariam, who's um, just tucking in behind Bekele. Well, we were talking about how the Ethiopians would have tactics of their own. Well, Zerzane Tedese has gone for the, for the front. But the Ethiopians are now second, third and fourth. Kenboy, the Kenyan now running for Qatar. He's been there or thereabouts and he's making sure he's keeping close order. But the Ethiopians are just content to sit in behind Zerzane Tedese. But Tedesse is not an athlete you can underestimate. He had a brilliant victory at the World Cross Country Championships in Mombasa in 2007. He's got strength and he's got the confidence and the belief that he can beat uh, Kenanisa Bekele. Well, he's going to have to try. I mean, he, he won the World Cross Country Championships back in 2007. But the man, as, as Peter pointed out, in third is the reigning World Cross Country Champion. And that's got an Ethiopian vest on it. So it's not going to be easy. Tedesse is trying hard. But uh, at the moment, it's just a matter of uh, how long the Ethiopians will wait before they make their move. 13 men in the leading group, and I'm still impressed by the Americans. Both Rupp and Ritzenheim are up there, middle to the back of the pack, out of the screen. We're now watching Moses Masai. To remind you, he was the Kenyan who was fourth at the Olympic Games last year. 
<laughs> and okay. now the Kenyans are getting involved in the tactics. Peter? Well, important splits just there, there on the screen. The halfway time, 13.40.45. I've been talking about these 2.45 plus kilometres. That last kilometre, 2.35.7. A very big change from 4K to 5K. Well, Tedesse is not having to do all the work at the front on his own. Moses Masai, the Kenyan, also there. It's a stream of East Africans here, as we would have expected. Masai at the front. Tedesse, a slightly ragged-looking runner, not as smooth as Kenanisa Bekele, the defending champion who's running in third place. And as I say that, Tedesse now hits the front again and puts in another injection of pace. Well, they obviously know, don't they, that the only way they're going to beat this man in third is to try and run this thing out of him, but uh, almost an impossible task when you consider that the man is capable of doing anything, really. He can go with a fast pace, he can set the pace himself, and he's all he's got to do in major championship races is just tick along behind and hang in and hang in and let everybody else do the hard work. And Masai, as you say, is doing that with Tedesse at the moment, just taking the lead. Mika Kogo is in fourth place. His countryman Masai is in second. Kenanisa Bekele there, just tucking in in third place. He's covering every single move at the moment. And the longer this race goes on, the fewer and fewer challenges there are to his crown. So they're keeping the rhythm going now. To Desse, who actually ran the London Marathon and didn't finish. So uh, obviously a lot of strength in his legs at the moment, deciding this is the best way to try and win this race, going hard from the front. And he's been out there most of the time, although it has been swapping with Masai just behind him. And uh, I must admit, though, look at the man in third place. He's not even sweating at the moment, Kanisa Bikili. What's interesting here, Steve, is that Bikeli is the only Ethiopian up in that lead quartet, or quintet, if you want to call it that, because the other Ethiopians have dropped back and they're starting to struggle. So we now have a group of four just getting away there. Zerzane Tedesse doing some hard work. He's got Masai the Kenyan behind him. Bikeli is in third place and Mika Kogo is in fourth and now a gap of about 10 or 15 meters opening up as you can see there 63 seconds for that lap Zertane Tedesse is starting to do the damage here and we're now beginning to see who the main protagonists in this race will be well Mika Kogo actually has been pre preparing quite well for this race um, in his last two races he's been running 5,000 meters and uh, performing pretty well at that so he's dropped down in distance and uh, maybe trying to get a little bit of speed in his legs in preparation for this 10,000 metres here at the World Championships. Give credit, though, really, to, uh, to Desse. He's done all the hard yards, hasn't he, out in front? He's looking around at the scoreboard. He's slowly but surely eking his way into the middles. There's only four there. He's just got to drop one more, I suppose. That's the way he's thinking. But it's, it's very, very hard to drop these three behind. It really is. They're class athletes. Coming up now, we just have eight laps remaining. Cersene Tedesse, the world cross-country champion from 2007, in the lead, the Olympic bronze medalist from 2004. Masai, the Kenyan, is in second. Kenanisa Bekele, the defending champion, the world champion, the world record holder, he's in third. Amika Kogo, as Steve was saying, the other hugely talented Kenyan in four. These four athletes miles ahead of the rest. Yes, about 40 metres back to the next group, which is actually headed by the younger Tedesi, Kadeni Tedesi, merger of Ethiopia also up there, so to Kipiego of Kenya. Kilometre split there, 2.38 for that K, Peter. Yes, 18.57.6 at 7,000 metres, and one of the other Ethiopians, Abibi de Kessa, uh, who had, uh, was way back down the field, has in fact given up now. He was in 15th place at the 7 kilometre point. Seven laps to go now. Just the four of them. Well, they're taking the laps away now, aren't they? They're not to no one is going to make a move, I don't think, until it comes to maybe three, maybe two, or even the last lap for home. They don't want to use any more energy than they have to. 
especially the three chasing Tedesse. Tedesse is doing the best he can out in front to do the destructive front running, but it's not really, I don't think, at the moment causing much damage. But he is really trying, he really is. He's clicking these laps away. You can tell how fast he's running. Look at the way that they pass the lap runners. Yes, again, behind these four, we've got that group of three that I mentioned. Then behind them, Hassan of Qatar, Gebri Mariam of Ethiopia, Ritzenhain and Rupp of the USA. Tedesse pushing on now, as he has done for the last seven or eight laps. But still, they're hanging on. And Kenanisa Bekele now, six laps to go. Thus far in this race, he has had a free ride. Well, it's very rarely do you see Bekele take the pace up. He doesn't have to. This man could almost run a 50, a 50 point or maybe in a 51 second or 52 second lap at the end of some of the greatest distance races you've ever seen. He's got all the armory you need. One of the greatest distance runners of all time, if not the greatest distance runner of all time, is sitting in third place and they're starting to drop Kogo. So the medals maybe have already been sorted out. Mika Kogo, as Steve said, a gap has opened up. Kogo is a class act. Bronze Bronze medalist last year, but he is dropping off. Well, credit to Tedesse. He really has done the work, and he, if he gets the bronze medal here, or any medal of a kind, he deserves it. He's worked hard, he's made them work hard too, and I think now he thinks it should be someone else taking the pace up. He's moved out slightly, he's looking up. Masai on his shoulder says, no, I'll still tuck in behind you, and there's no way that Pakili is going to take the pace up. So eight kilometres reached in 21.37.8. Two kilometres to go, five laps. And look at Tedesse now. He's putting in a surge. He's really going for it, the Eritrean, on the back straight. And Masai is struggling to make up the ground. He's having to react. Kenanisa Bekele is tucked in in third place at the moment. But Steve, Zerzane Tedesse is making his break at this stage. He is, but look, there was a moment there, I think, where uh, Bekele thought, I'll let Masai see if he can catch up. And unfortunately, Masai didn't put the hard yards in. And then he thinks, OK, I'll just go round you and click on to the back of the lead man. Tedesse looks up again and unfortunately sees the shadow of Bekele right on his shoulder this time. What a great run, though, by Tedesse, eh? He keeps looking up at that scoreboard, hoping that the green vest will disappear, but it will not disappear. There it is, locked in. Four laps to go now, and the Eritrean, Zerzane Tedesse, is trying to run the sting out of the finish of Kenanisa Bekele. And Masai the Kenyan is hanging on for third at the moment. A 62-second lap by Tedesi. Well, that's great running. It's not enough to take the sting out of Bekele, though. 62-second lap at this stage of the race would, would actually kill anybody, and it's killed virtually everybody else off. And he is trying again, though, Tedesi. Down that back straight, he turns the screw a little bit more. Bekele looks behind to see where they are, and they're dropping off. Masai has gone. Masai, I think, is settling for the bronze. Uh, sorry, for the bronze medal. As Tedesi tries again, you've got to give this man credit. Trained for the London Marathon, disappointed there, but he's come back here with a vengeance in Berlin. Three laps to go now. Zerzane Tedesi trying to break away from a man who has never been beaten over 10,000 metres. It looks as though Masai, the Kenyan, is going to have to settle for the bronze. It's going to be a tough haul in for him at the end. But Zerzane Tedesse, as he's done all the way through this race, is pushing things on. But still, there is a shadow behind him. And that shadow is in the form of Kenanisa Bekele, the Olympic champion, the defending world champion trying to replicate the achievements of his countryman Haile Gabri Selassie by securing a fourth world crown over 10,000 metres. Well, now they're coming into, really, Bikini's territory, aren't they? He's moving out a little bit onto the outside of Tedesi. He's not literally in his shoes anymore. He's waiting and he's waiting. You can almost sense the increase in his cadence. He's chopping his stride length down a little bit, keeping the cadence up. Just drifting along, Tedesi looks up again. 
Now, with just two laps to go in the men's 10,000 metres, Tedeschi of Eritrea has been pushing it along all the time. He's dropped everybody else, apart from the man that he really would love to drop. Kenisa Bekili is still there, is still waiting, playing that waiting game until the last lap. He's dropping his arms now. He's just relaxing behind, gearing himself up for what he is famous for, the last 400 metres of any major distance race. So they say a 63 second lap after 62 before, so the pace has dropped a bit. But at halfway stage, it was only two seconds over the top 12 men, but now the field is spread out. 550 metres to go. Zerzine Tedesse, the Eritrean, has given it absolutely everything. He has worked so hard to get away from the man who is sitting on his shoulder, tucking him behind. Just over 400 metres to go. Now they hear the bell. The final of the 10,000 metres for men. And Kennedy Sabakele has tracked Zerzine Tedesse all the way. And now the Ethiopian goes away. He is surging into the back straight. And we are watching one of the very greatest distance runners in the history of the sport. It's all over. It almost was all over from the start. They just could not do anything to destroy this man. And when it comes to the last lap, this is a man who is on his own, much the same as Usain Bolt is the greatest sprinter of all time. This man is probably the greatest distance runner we have ever seen. He has won every single 10,000 meter race he's been in. The arm goes up, the finger goes up. I am the best 10,000 meter runner in the world. No one, but no one is gonna take it from me. Look at the gap that he's coming through now. He really has opened up a 60 meter gap in the last 400 meters. Absolutely incredible. What a superb race. The brave Kenyan coming in now for the bronze medal. He tracked it all the way and hung on. Matsai was fourth in Beijing. He's third this time. He does get his place on the podium. And we have just witnessed one of the greatest performances in distance running. Merger, the Ethiopian comes in. It's a tale of East Africans crossing the line. There's Kip Yego. Well, this race, good run by the American there. Richard but this, it was. this Sorry. race is all about one man. He has equaled the achievements of his countrymen, Haile Gabri Selassie. He's unbeaten over 10,000 metres. The Americans have done well here. He's absolutely out on his feet. And there's Dersene Tedesse's younger brother. He went with the pace early on and suffered. Merger joins his countryman, Kenanisa Bekele. And Rich, Steve, we're looking at the greatest distance runner in history. What a man and what a race. Without question, let's not forget a championship record there, 26 45 and that's uh, 17 seconds fastest than any other 10,000 meters this year it doesn't rank in the top 10 times i suppose in the world but nevertheless they are probably record attempts at some of the meetings in europe so that sort of time in this championship absolutely wonderful let's give it to Dedesse though because if it wasn't for him that sort of time would not be possible and there he is the little man from eritrea a remarkable silver medal well, let me give you a little bit of numbers here. 1340.7, Kenanisa Bekele's first five kilometres. 1305.6, his second five kilometres. And on that last lap, the first 200 metres of that last lap was 28.3. That's when he kicked away from Tedesi. He finished with 29.1, but he was easing down then. So still a 57.4 last lap overall. Pretty impressive, Steve. Well, that 13.05... 5,000 meter differential is uh, is what really does the damage with the African athletes. No one apart from the Africans can live with it. And to Desate now, I think deserving the applause of the crowd and so too Bekele as he runs around the back straight. Well, you can see just how much the athletes who were lapped early on were giving it there. Anyway, the Japanese athlete all left trailing in the wake of the man in the centre of your screen there. Kenanisa Bekele, flanked by his two countrymen, a championship record. He is still unbeaten over 10,000 metres, and what a brave, brave run 
by Zerzine Tedesse. What a moment for the Tedesse family. His younger brother was in there as well. Zerzine Tedesse followed up his Olympic bronze from 2004 with a World Championship silver this year. But it's all gold for the Ethiopian, Kenanisa Bekele. He didn't have the easiest winter. He was injured. There were slight question marks over him at the start of the summer season and he's answered absolutely everything this German crowd are a knowledgeable crowd they don't just cheer throwing medals Masai he'll take a well-deserved place on the podium as well his countrywoman Lynette Masai she got the gold in the women's 10,000 meters they shut out the Ethiopians but nobody was going to deny Kenanisa Bekele a fourth world crown over 10,000 meters one day we might see this man beaten, but that would take a remarkable, remarkable athlete. We're well, looking at poetry in motion once again, Steve. Well, he is on form, isn't he? Look at this, he's not breathing heavy. I mean, I don't know what you can do to beat a man like this. They try their best, but all he does is wait. That's, that's all you have to do when you can run as fast as he can over the last 400 metres. You have to let the others play all their cards, and then you just trump it right at the very end. I don't think maybe any athlete will beat him. I think time will. He'll just get older and hopefully a little bit slower to give the other athletes a bit of a chance. Then he goes up to the marathon and beats every Gabriel Celeste's world record, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Look at the delight on the face of Zerzine Tedesse. It was a really brave effort to run the sting out of Kenanisa Bekele's legs. And rightly so, he is delighted with his silver. But Bekele, well... It was a privilege to see that, it really was. Masai took his turn at the front. He tried to help the Eritrean break that Ethiopian dominance. But once again, when we get to the medal ceremony, it will be an Ethiopian gold medal. Confirmation of the victory for Kenanisa Bekele, wrapping up his fourth gold medal at World Championships. Absolutely superb. A brave silver for Tedesse, and the bronze going to Masai. Fabulous race to watch, it really was.